Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. We're going to be trying a Ishtar fit for T6 Abyss. And this is actually, in fact, an armor Ishtar. So it's very common that people use a shield Ishtar for Abyss because it's really easy to get a good, like, HP per second going on with the shield boosters because the extra large shield boosters are just so, so damn OP. So they get so good HP per seconds while using them in the mid slots there. And then on top of that, since you're using mid slots for tank, you don't have to waste damage mods or potential, like, you know, slots in the lows for damage mods that could be sacrificed. Because here we're using armor, an armor style. And since we have six mid slots, we're kind of limited with how much damage you can put on. So to achieve a decent tank, we have to bling hard. Like we're going with A type, A type, A type, everything A type here. To be able to have three drawn damage amplifiers, I preferably like to have four, but we're settling on three because we have enough tank, I think, at least with these three modules right here. We've got some good rigs as well for the uh, boosting up these armor repairs. And then we get three drone damage amplifiers. Typical Ishtars in the Abyss, I've noticed, carry four drone damage amplifiers, sometimes three, but usually four. When it comes to this Ishtar right here, we're just going to go with three. I've also got this Federation Navy Omnidirectional tracking link to make the tracking a bit better, so that's going to be really nice to have. This is a very expensive fit, and to be honest, I don't know how effective it will be. This is the first time I'm ever going to test this out. But basically, we're going to have, we're blinging this so much, as I said before, we bling this stuff, and we're also rocking some high grade Asclepians as well. So, We've got some serious bling to achieve some decent tank on this, but it'll hopefully go good. We're going to be doing the T6 Firestorms. Since we go armor, there's going to be absolutely no problem when it comes to the buffer, or hopefully it won't be any problem when it comes to the buffer, because in the Firestorms, we get a nice buff to our armor buffer. All right, let's go and jump into the Abyss. I see some often Ishtars in the Abyss, or at least high tier Abyss. They go with like uh, geckos, but I'm going to try here going with some augmented drones because the augmented should be still pretty good as like a really high DPS type of drone. See here, if we put the augmented in, we have uh, 930 DPS, so that'll be really good for that sleeper waves doing some a lot of brute force DPS. Plug in these expensive implants now. Necessary to achieve decent tank on this, otherwise, without these. We're going to have a pretty horrible tank. We've already injected these boosters. I'm going to put the, actually the tracking speed script in here just to make these heavy drones have even better application than they already do from the Ishtar's like, bonuses to its drones. I hope it goes decently. You've got these like light beam lasers just as some complementary DPS. Uh, there could be other weapons you could use as well. You could use artillery cannons as well, like small artillery cannons, but I like to fact that the small beam lasers that I'm using, the, I think it's dual light beam lasers, they fit like perfectly when it came to the power grid because I was quite power grid limited due to me using two large cat batteries. But it'll also give some nice, good like, neutralizing resistance. And we've got two large ones as well, so that'll be amazing. We're going to start going with these armor repairs. And we'll put then the drones on these cinnabals are right here because they do the majority of the dps elite lucifer cinnabal because here it's got a decent buffer like we're going up and down you know it's really good the cinnabals shouldn't be any issue whatsoever since they don't do even particularly good damage type for our resists they do mainly em and thermal oh okay an explosive we do have a very low explosive resist so that could be like you know make them very favorable against the ad, uh, like tank but as we can see here, we're tanking like an absolute beast, so it really doesn't matter at all. You just have to be very wary of the drone aggro, because the drone aggro will be problematic, and it is pretty annoying as well when you're using like these heavy drones, because they move a lot slower than the medium drones of the Gila. So when you have to recall them, it'll take a little bit longer, so they will have to sustain damage for a bit of a longer time. Take some augmented as well going on here. See now what we've got here. We actually want to take Imperial Navy, because Imperial Navy... Uh, has the, essentially the same DPS as a Gleam, maybe a tiny bit more, it has a tiny bit less, very tiny bit, it's very minuscule, but it has a lot more range than Gleam. The benefit of Gleam is that Gleam is what you want to use if you've got tracking issues, because tra uh, the tracking of Gleam is better than the uh, Imperial Navy multi-frequency, so it's really only if you've got like small frigates like these guys orbiting you, you want to use Gleam, otherwise it's always, almost always more favorable to use the Imperial Navy multi-frequency, because it's just got more range. And especially when they're like at these like, sort of intermediate ranges here. But here, for example, these guys, I'll use Gleam on them because he will be very nice or very favorable to use this high track. He's got, oh, he got popped right there. 
I was thinking maybe even a, perhaps a Webify would be good because then you sort of hold things in place, but I don't know. We're killing these guys super fast. Like, look at that. Let me recall these guys here. Another nice thing about the augmented is that they're very tanky. They're like the, uh, they have the same amount of HP, I believe, as the, the Federation Navy ones, the tanky ones, but they are obviously more expensive. But on the other hand, they do have a very good pure DP, uh, like pure DPS so with the, for the waves where you have like uh, enemies that have hardly any resistances, like Ephialtes, for example. They have like 10% re unified resistances. So they're doing the optimal damage type for the weather doesn't play as big of a role. It's the better there to just like, you know, go for the highest raw DPS you can get your hands on, really. Now, ooh, taking a bit of damage here. I want to kill actually these stupid frigates because they're the ones causing the problems now with all these uh, drone aggro i think it's them who are doing all this stuff so we can use the gleam try to actually know this is a gleam he was even too short range for these guys we're gonna have to use imperial navy multi-frequency okay now we'll take maybe out the super dps what i call the augmented uh, it's unfortunate that like the low slots you know if i had an extra low slot i would put an assault damage control i like the fact that you're able to put an assault damage control on the uh, you know, the uh, heavy assault cruise is really nice, especially for gankers, but it's just the low slots are not there. It's just so annoying. And I feel like the same, it's the same way when it comes to the Cerberus, where I just wish it had an extra mid slot because it's like really starved for mid slots there to get some cap, some mobility, like prop mods, and also some a decent tank. Like, I cannot have everything there on the Cerberus unless you go with like really bling. It's the same thing here, essentially. Like, we since we are very limited on our slots, we have to bling hard with the implants to get a decent tank in the Cerberus for example you'd have to bling hard to get application you can use the high grade uh, hydras they can make it so that you can actually get some decent application without having to spend a whole lot of low slots it's a similar case here but instead we're trading tank for dps really because uh luckily when we're using drones drones almost always have pretty good tracking even to these tiny things like look we're using heavy drones no issues tracking to these guys and i think it has a lot to do with that we're using a federation navy omnidirectional tracking link it helps like you know got that's good tracking and the augmented i don't know if they've got better tracking than the classical uh, uh uh, tech twos perhaps they do i'm not 100 percent sure okay we can maybe shoot these guys now with aurora since these guys are pretty far away now, i'm just worried a little bit about the drone aggro going on because these guys are yellow box now so we could maybe in fact have, oh did you see how fast that in ixion died these ogres are crazy they show absolutely no mercy let's see why is there resists here um probably it would be better to just go for the uh, the tech two ones because the with the weather effect i think they'll do more damage it's just that i happen to have the augers that were augmented out there otherwise usually you can think of it is that if you have a ship that has like very high natural resists you can think of it that the weather effect will play a bigger role and in that way it will make so that the tech twos will do more damage since they purely do uh, the thermal damage which is necessary to do like optimally it's just for the weather effect right here that's also a reason why in Concord Waves, actually, I also use uh, the augmented drones. Now, not when it comes to the Edencom guys. The Edencom guys have really high resist, but when it comes to the uh, Concord guys, like Marshall, Pacifier, Enforcer, they all have like 33% resistances, and that's, relatively speaking, a low amount of resistance. So, actually, the DPS boost you get from the augmented tends to outweigh the... A pure DPS of the Tech 2 ones. It's interesting, actually. Well, how uh, you okay? You got a little bit of. Thing, you have to do a bit of a calculated approach to it. I had to like make a little bit of calculations uh, outside of the abyss just to see what would be better. And I'm not even sure if they're right, but uh, at least I know with Ephialtes and Concord that it is almost always best to just go with the highest DPS you can get. It doesn't have to think too much about the weather effect we can even go now i think the let's see now has he got good resists yeah it'll be good to go with the tech two ogres if we just unlock this guy and we can have these drones just go directly for the overmind you can see here we've got a bit of a bigger buffer here when we've got the 3000 now hp on our buffer in the a firestorm since it's boosted up there it's still not that big to be honest i believe a gila has more shield buffer even after the firestorm weather effect gila doesn't have 4k hp yeah look the gila has a massive buffer so it makes it really good in these kind of situations where you want to have a big buffer 
because the the Ishtar it just seems like generally speaking it doesn't have a pretty big buffer everything is it's got small buffer small shields more armor because the shields are not naturally a whole lot so smaller like the natural hp of this arm is 2000 hp and then you have the shield that's 1.75 k hp i mean it's not a big difference it's not a massive like oh wow we're so much tankier when we're armor tanked but you have to also remember that there are resistance types as well like for example we have zero percent resist so it is very much benefited in that regard when it comes to the um, but I have to also remember that I'm using a bit of a module here to boost our resistance, so we would only have 10% explosive, for example. So still, we don't have a pretty, pretty big buffer. It's mainly the structure, to be honest, that has a decent buffer. Like it's typical Galente that they had, tend to have pretty big uh, structures, just the way they work, really. Shoot these spotlighters, and there's a lot of plate forges, which, to be honest, I should go for because they make so that they do a bit of remote reps. Let's go a little bit to the side here. We're hardly doing any damage from this Aurora. Can we go for Imperial Navy? Maybe I should have brought standard ammo because standard ammo will actually do some damage. Oh, we're really slow actually with the with the Ishtar. Like that, 600 meters a second. Oh, the Gila is faster. I guess that's what you get from being in a heavy assault cruiser. It's a heavy boy. <laughs> heavy boy. Okay, let's make our way towards the Bethnic Abyssal Overmind, or Endo Bethnic Abyssal Overmind. Need to... What is the fall off on Imperial Navy? Let's see now. 9.7. Basically, the edge of fall off is what these guys are. It's a bit annoying that this guy is so far away and we're so slow, so it takes us forever to get in range of the short range ammo that we use with the dual light beam lasers. There we go. He's going down now. Oh, we took a big hit right there because of the wrecking shot. This is just the way it is, really. Our wrecking shots can be scary sometimes. You have to be a little bit careful for those guys. Here's a bit of Aurora. This guy's getting too far away. This is like really where standard ammo would come in useful. It would have been really nice. These beam lasers taking forever to chew through these, these little light drones over here. Not so good tracking as well. Like You see that dual light beam lasers are missed completely. And then on top of that, we need to be in range and they're not in range really they're like just in aurora range which is too extreme too far away to do significant damage always trading off too much range for damage and then on the other hand we've got imperial navy which they're always decide to stick at the edge of its range is quite infuriating but this guy is actually dead almost soon so we can make our way towards the transfer conduit to be honest at this point yeah we can just make our way towards the transfer conduit because these drones will just hammer all these little light drones in the way there. Well, I could have probably done it. Oh, another wrecking shot. 2k hit right there. This wave or this, like, you know, run we're doing right now, minus 70% thermal, gives us not so good expectation or uh, doesn't give us such a good image of how good the time would be, but it does give us a very good understanding of our tank because this is the worst case our tank would be. And at least we were able to take a couple of wrecking shots there. The Overmind does do thermal damage. And it'll be pretty tough, I think, in the Triglavian waves. We're going to hopefully not get popped by them. The Triglavians are going to be pretty deadly. And it's a bit annoying that the Ishtar has a really high kinetic resist. Because that is not so useful in the Abyss. There are not a whole lot of NPCs. Or at least, like, deadly NPCs that do kinetic resist. Um, you could say that most deadly NPCs usually do thermal. The Concord wave... They do thermal, killing a lot of cruisers because they have good application with the marshals. And Triglavian waves can spool up to very high DPS very easily. And they also do a lot of thermal. Explosive too, but also a lot of thermal. So thermal is a really useful damage type to tank. And it can sometimes be worth it just to go with like a thermal armor hardener. In fact, that's why I go with it on my hybrid Gila. Just because in the Firestorm, reducing a thermal resist. And then on top of that, the deadly waves do thermal damage. It's very useful to go with some kind of thermal amplifier. I was thinking of going with it with uh, Ishtar. But I was just thinking that this explosive resist is so low that we're gonna have to put something that can at least aid that a little bit because having a nanobot accelerator will make us like tank more even though we don't have if like explosive damage even without changing the explosive damage if that makes any sense okay so we've got some cruisers sleeper cruisers over here 
here is where we're going to want to use some uh, aug augmented guys because these guys as you can see here like I was talking about before they have so little resists that you may as well just hit the highest damage type okay let's start moving in towards the transfer conduit time is not amazing it's not amazing uh, it's just something that I always have troubles with especially in the t6 firestorm like it's you want to get as good time as possible and it can be sometimes pretty difficult when the buffed armor but on the other hand it is nice that the hammerheads they are the highest dps drones so you sort of have a bit of a counteraction there right, the hammerheads do way more dps than any other drones second is really the vespers and that's why the exotic sites tend to go really fast because you don't have any change in their armor there and you're still using the second uh, highest dps drone so you tend to get through them very quickly if you go for uh, the kinetic drones like vespers not vespers actually you will use wasps with the ishtar because of heavy drones that i can do kinetic damage of vespers now we don't want to use this imperial navy over here because this guy is pretty far away now we'll bring him out again oh that guy took serious damage now look now that i switched to aurora they're smart these guys they're smart now that i've switched to aurora they decide to go for getting in go getting in they would decide to go getting close but when we we're there if they're far away it's like oh okay i need to use aurora and it's like no you're using it now aurora well i'm gonna get in close because you're not using multi-frequency anymore <laughs> Look at these guys, they're just like attacking my drones. Look at them, filth. Attacking my drones. Have some respect for drones. See, that's these two guys here. So we're gonna wanna take these guys out, actually. See, I should tank is absolutely no problem, it seems. We've got a really good tank. It's just DPS, to be honest. You could, if you really wanted to, just remove that multi spectrum and maybe do some, uh, something crazy with boosters or something like that, but tank is really going to be lacking if you remove that multi-spectrum coating that I've got this one right here adds more DPS potentially but it's not going to be nice when it comes to our tank probably get popped <laughs> okay shoot this Ephialtis Lancer here please they just keep attacking drones these stupid dr sleepers just so annoying like they really frustratingly annoying when they like to attack drones I have every single drone right here just charge in on this guy here just so that he learns not to mess with drones. Augmented ogres or ogres in general they have big structure so they actually can survive decently long even with just structure. Now obviously I didn't place him on the one shooting me it was the, the look at these two guys actually he was no? that guy was shooting because you can see they're not targeting anyone it means they're targeting our drones just have to be a little bit careful there. There we go, and I think this ogre needs to be returned soon. There we go, kill, uh, wreck that guy. Put an ogre there, put an ogre there. And I don't think it's worth putting the... Yeah, it's not worth putting the augmented ogres on these... Uh, the little sleeper frigates. Only the uh, Ephialtis guys is worth putting them on. Let's start shooting this warden over here. A lot of frigates on the grid, actually. Can have these guys there, like taking a lot of damage. These ogres, like they're all getting owned. <laughs> Hope they don't die. It'd be a big loss if you were doing this on tranquility, where the ogres. I think each one costs like 10, 20 million or something like that. There's a little tick they just remove from you like that. They get a little tick from you. Like you know how you're earning ticks in Nullsec, and they get a tick where they destroy your drone. <laughs> okay. Shoot these guys. There we go. Hmm. So Warden over here, he was really very enthusiastically tanking my light beam laser. You can see that he just tanks them up and down. They've got the remote repairs. That's a bit what to do why with they're having a good time tanking me. They're just outside gleam range too, so it's a bit unfortunate considering we could have some good like tracking if we were to use gleam. Oh come on. I hate it when it does that where you just want to move the drone group but then it said it just merges them we're gonna have to make another drone group here super dps there we go drone augmented ogres go crazy and spread the drones as well a little bit oh it's not using augmented ogres using the tech two ones because here it'll be best to use the tech two ones since they've got pretty high resists 
Like when it comes to the Concord guys, they have like 33% resist. It's just about right, or just a little bit more to use actual applied DPS to use the uh, the augmenteds. After 33% resist, it's really not worth it. I've found like when we're talking about Omni resistances, that is like similar resistances across the board. There we go. They can make quick work of these frigs. That's really nice because you can split them up a bit. How much time? Yeah, time is not the best. It doesn't seem to be particularly good time. I wish it was just possible to do these T6 firestorms with a good time, but it's just really difficult. Really damn difficult. But there is a reason why these filaments are so cheap, because it's obviously a lot harder to run them fast. <laughs> so there we go. T6 firestorm armor Ishtar. Bit of a different fit than what is classically used with a shield fit. I don't think it's particularly good, but because of like a bit to do with DPS, but also that the buffer we get is not amazing either. It is nice that we have the ability to fit two large cat batteries. Uh, so we get good capacitor. We get this tracking link over here that helps a bit with the tracking as well. Potentially, I think that, I, to be honest, what I think would maybe be best is just to go with a Gamma Ishtar that can do the T6 Gammas. The Gammas cost obviously more than the Firestorms, but it seems nice because you can get so good HP per second with the Shield Booster and then have all the lows dedicated to damage. Then on top of that, you can put probably an Assault Damage Control there and you could get the really nice buffer from the Gamma site in the shield. So that'll be pretty good. I mean, like the buffer of shield is naturally not a whole lot smaller than armor anyway. So it's not like the whole world. They're not missing out on so much by going shield. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video right here. I uh, just learning new things, you know, it's important to test things. And I think it's important to share with you guys what I find. So you guys can also learn new things from my tests. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.